Hello friends, welcome to ADO.NET uh, tutorial. In the last sub-series, we learned about uh, primary key and other important constraints. And in this video, we will further explore about uh, more constraints. In this uh, sub-series, we will uh, learn about uh, further constraints. In this first video, we will see how to set not null for a specific data grid column. So, we will design this form so that it can be launched from our previous example itself. So, if you look at the example, we have two tables. One is publisher and another one is employees and these two data get loaded into two separate data grid view controls we will use this example to set primary and foreign key relationship as well so that we will do in the video number four so we know that sql server provides constraints to maintain data integrity so in this course, we are learning about the ADO.NET by keeping SQL Server as the backend. And we know that SQL Server exposes data integrity via the constraints. It allows data validation before committing it to the database. In SQL Server, we can make specific column as not null and we can say that the column is a the column contains a not null constraint in ado.net we can do the same with a column property allow db null of the so that's the property allow db null of the data column object accepts a boolean value to indicate column should allow null or not. The default value is true. That means data column allows null entries. This means if you set false, then the column in the data grid view or the column in the um, in the ADO.NET object becomes mandatory. So when it becomes mandatory, when you tie that uh, data table containing the data column to the data grid view, user should provide value for the specific column. They cannot commit the column to a null entry. In this video, we will load two data tables. One is publisher and another one is employees from pubs db we saw that in the previous uh, screenshot we will also set not null to employees first name and publisher id columns and if you see we have the employees table get loaded into the corresponding data grid view and you can see there are four columns here and we will set not null to the first name column then not null to the publisher id as well all right now let's go to the demo so here is our uh, example from our uh, previous uh, sub-series and here we kept explore foreign key and other constraints and if you double click we are launching a dialog x02 f key right and that is designed here and if you see it contains So this is simply a label and this one is also a label and we have a data grid view and we name that as DGV Publishers 
we have one more data grid view and we named it as DGV employees. Then we have five buttons. The first button is BTN load data, which will load the data into these data grid views. Then here we are exploring the Nortnel constraint. In this button click, we are we will set a specific column width so that in the data grid view we can restrict a specific column with a specific length. Then we will also see how to mimic the default constraint to a specific column. And finally, we will explore how to set primary and foreign key relationship within the ADO.NET. Here, all this constraint, if you see, it will be done in the front end. Just to mimic the constraints that is available in the back end. So this will help catching the constraint violation error in the front end itself instead of uh, pushing that to the database and waiting for database constraint violation to happen, right? All right, now let's go to the coding part. We'll right click and go to view code on this form. And first thing what we will do is we will add the namespace system.data.sql client. So the form uses two data table, right? Uh, let's close this one. And if you see one is a publisher and another one is employees. So we will add these two as a data table. One is the publisher data table and another one is the employee data table. Once we load these two data table content, we can assign these two data tables to the data grid view. Right, there are two data grid views and there are two corresponding data tables we declared here. So now let's go ahead with the load data click event. All right, here if you see, we have a str SQL, select publisher ID, publisher name, country from publisher, order by publisher ID. So this is one table picking data from the, right, this is one select query picking data from the publisher's table. Next, we pick select employee ID, first name, convert where care of higher date right so here we are converting the date to the where care and this is the format we are using and we call that as a higher date right and finally we are picking the publisher id from the employee table now let's go to a school server and see what these two query is returning so it will be good idea to check the SQL server with uh, the data then you can form the STR SQL in your uh, backend So this is one query.
and this one is our next query. Let me do the formatting. So, if you see, now we have two queries extracted from our uh, edu.net code. So, this is the first data we are returning from the publisher's table. Publisher ID, publisher name and country. And in the second query, we are returning employee ID, first name, hire date, as well as publisher ID. And from this publisher ID, we can say the employee and for which publication he is working. Say, for example, let's display both and if you see Karin is having the publisher ID 1736. That means Karin is working for New Moon Books 1736, right? Alright, now let's go back to the gedio.net code and if you see, we have two query separated by comma, right? This is first select query and this one is the second select query. Once STR SQL is formed, we are making use of SQL data adapter and we are supplying the STR SQL and we are providing the connection string as a pups. In our video series, we saw multiple time how to set this connection string as part of the properties. Right. So here we already defined the connection string. You can go ahead and make use of this UI to create the connection string under the settings. So that's what we are referring it here. So next, if you see here, we are creating the data set and we name it as dspubemp, right? Then we make use of adapter we already created, right? Adapter.fill method we are calling and we pass our data set. We know that adapter is tied to an SQL query and it is a combination of two select statement. That means we will be getting two record sets and that will get filled in this data set. So the data set will have two tables now after this fill method call. So we are referring these data tables dspub emp that's our data set name dot tables of zero that means our first table publisher table right and publisher table we already declared it here and we are assigning that publisher table here next the same way we are referring the second table and we are referring that with the employee table right now our two data tables are ready and they have the uh, data table assigned to it right whatever is there in the data set that get assigned to these two data tables next publisher table dot table name so that's the property we are accessing and renaming it as from default to publishers the same way we are referring the employee table and naming it as employees. Right now, from our data adapter, we filled the data set, and from the data set, we retrieved the data tables and assigned to our data members here, data members of the form publisher table and employee table. Next, we set two primary key constraints. One is for publisher and another one is for employee. And if you see here, publisher table, we are referring the publisher table, constraints collection, add, we name our constraints as 
pkey pub id then from same publisher table we are picking the columns collection and from the column collection we are picking the publisher id the true here tells that uh, the constraint what we are adding is a primary key right primary key name which column is the primary key the boolean property true tells that we are adding a primary key to the uh, publisher table to the constraints collection we added primary key right from publisher table the same way for employee table we are adding one more we are adding a primary key so first we added a primary key for a publisher table next we switch our focus to employee table and adding the primary key the same way this time the primary key name is pk employee id column what we are picking is employee id and if you see emp id we are already picking right so that we specify here and we picked the column name by specifying the parameter as true we are telling that the emp id column is the primary key column in the second employee table in the first publisher table pub id is the primary key so as already known this is dgv publisher and this one is dgv employees now we can bind these two data tables to the data grid view here if you see dgb publishers dot data source equal to publisher table right publisher table is already available that is retrieved from the data set right okay now we are assigning the data source for our first data grid view then for second data grid view we are assigning the data source so for both the data table we assigned the data sources because our publisher and employee tables are ready by this time so we bound those data tables to these two data grid views so the role of um, data adapter is done here its role is to pick the data from database and fill the data set using the fill method once the data set is filled we retrieved the tables and we assigned that to the data grid view so what we can do we can dispose the data adapter here for code readability we are not using the using blocks using blocks when you use you no need to call dispose because when the block of code goes out of scope uh, all the edivo.net object will get released now we will rebuild the solution and we will run it to see the data in the data grid view so when you click this it will launch our second dialog here when you click load data it will load publisher as well as employees um data table and shows that in these two data grid views right that's all here in this first video and the next video we will see how to use the not null constraint or otherwise we will implement that here itself now let me go to the design view and click on set not null here in the code you can see the click event is ready from the employee table that means here we are focusing on the second data grid view that is tied to the data table employee so employee table 
right we have that as a data member here for our uh, form derived class ex02 underscore fk right so that's why we can able to access that data table here employee table that got retrieved from our data set and in the next event routines we will be directly using the employee table I mean the uh, data tables that is tied to the data grid views. This time we are picking the employee table and from employee table we are picking the column first name from columns collection. Columns using the string indexer we are taking the first name and accessing the property right. This is a data column collection since we Picking a specific column, we are accessing a single data column and setting the property allow db null to false. From employee table, first name column allow db null is false. That means first name should be valid, right? It should not be null otherwise. The same way we are setting publisher ID as not null. Now and these two constraints we are setting on click of this uh, button. Now let's run this and explore. Load data. Alright. Now if I go here, let me copy this employee ID. Instead of F, I will put FR a name or here I am giving it as empty purposefully then typing some date publisher ID let me give it as a triple mine or I will leave the publisher ID also empty so now if you see when I move to the next row or when I click on the next row this row will be committed and if you see the row is committed with two null entries right suppose if you want to keep these two as not null column you have to click set not null and let me reload it and set the not null for those two columns and attempt the same stuff again Can my so here I'm leaving the publisher ID as empty. Let me copy this to clipboard and have both as empty and click the next row. So now ADO.NET tries to commit the row from data grid view. We know that this data grid view is tied to the table, uh, data table employee. And in data table employee, we set F name and pub ID as not null. Right? Let me click this. Right? Since it is not null, it is not allowing that. Now, Let me give and when I click outside it will not allow right this time it is saying column pub ID does not allow null let me give both uh, valid value and let's give you a date let 
Ich glaube, das ist mein. And when I click outside, it will accept. Why? Because these two does not allow null. Now we provided a valid value and the row was committed now. Right? So that's the use of not null constraint. And we simply used allow db null property to mimic the not null constraint in our front end. That's all here in this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.